welcome to JST Abalone. Um, we're an abalone farm here in Stanley. Um, we have about 3 million abalone on the farm. This is where it all begins. So we're in the hatchery at the moment, and these are our parents. So we breed all of our own, we breed all of our own stock, um, and it all starts here. So this is a this is a green lip abalone that we have on, have here. Um, these are all farm red, so we don't go back to the wild. So um, yeah, these are the, these are our parents. These are our parents. Wow. What happens in the wild? So these are all these are all our males. So they're separate sexes, males and females. Um, what happens in the wild is the male will release his gametes into the water. At the same time, the female releases her gametes into the water, and they'll mix up and fertilise and then become baby abalone. Yeah. And how does it work in the hatchery? In the hatchery, we induce them to spawn. Um, so we we give them a temperature shot. They release their gametes. We mix them up in the bucket and uh, voila. <laughs> Sorry. We put the males and the females in separate tubs. Um, we induce them to spawn with temperature, and this is an ozone-producing UV lamp, and that stimulates them to release their eggs and sperm. What will happen is after about eight hours, the males will spawn, and then the females will spawn. We'll collect up the eggs. So, like I was saying, one female can release up to two or three million eggs. So we'll collect up the eggs, and then we'll count them and then we'll collect up the sperm, count that, and then we want to put 10 sperm to every egg. Yeah, so that all happens next door in the, uh, in the hatchery. So what happens in here, so we get the eggs and the sperm, we mix them up in the bucket, we put about three million fertilized eggs in each one of these. These are called an LRT, so a large rearing tank. Um, after 18 hours, they'll hatch and they'll swim to the surface. So at that point in time, we, we carefully skim them off the top, move them to a clean tank, um, and then 30 hours post-hatch, they'll then have a shell. So at that point, we don't have to scoop them anymore. We can drop them onto a screen. Um, yeah, and they get a clean every day for the next six days. Um, just clean, they, they need to be really kept clean. They're really prone to bacteria outbreak. Um, and we're always just selecting the best selecting the best larvae. Yeah. Do you have to feed them through that time? No, nah, so abalone are very different to a lot of other shellfish that are agriculture produced. Um, so no feeding, they're just living off the energy of the yolk sac. Wow. Yeah, so it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So six days and then after six days, we take them outside into the nursery and um, that's when they get their first feed. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 So, um, we haven't actually got any baby abalone on sheets anymore. So after they've been on the sheets, um, they run out of food. So then we have to wean, wean them onto an artificial artificial diet. So that all happens around Easter time. So we haven't actually got any sheets. But what happens is we come out from the, from the hatchery. We pour the larvae into tanks that look a little bit like this. This green algae, which is on this plastic sheet, is called alvala lens. And what happens is the larvae are still free swimming, so they get poured into these tanks. They're looking for a place to set. They swim around, they chew a little bit of that, and they just go, yep, this is me, and they'll never swim again. So they'll, they'll set on these sheets and then um, graze on these benthic diatoms, which are just um, single cell or double cell algae and um, they'll graze on that for the next six months and grow to about 10 mil. Okay. Yeah, and then we wean them onto artificial. Yeah. So once they get to 10 mil in these tanks, they stay here or do they go somewhere else? Well, some stay here, but the majority go somewhere else. What we can see here on top, this is the uneaten food from last night. Um, so the abalone are nocturnal, so they'll come out at night and graze, and then during the day they hide away. So. So these are our little babies. Wow. Yeah, so there's about 8,000 in this tank, which is pretty light, but these will be going 
out into a big tank in the next month or so. These are, um, we've sort of jumped a little bit here, but these are our two year old fish. So these are our, these are our harvest fish. So these are fish that we're harvesting at the moment. So they're a lot bigger and a lot heavier stock. So same principle, um, food gets fed out at night, they come out and graze at night, quite away during the quite away during the day. So these are the green lip? No, these are a cross between a green lip and a black lip. Okay, yeah. so do you do the hybrid yourself? Yeah we do. Yeah. We have to use a black female with a green male. We can't cross them back the other way. Yeah. They probably look a little bit more like a like a black lip rather than a green lip. But, um, so now, because he's out, he's looking to go somewhere undercover. Yeah, yeah, he's got all these feelers and everything out. Yeah. Sensing what's around him. So in the wild, what happens is they'll sit out like that and they'll wait for dripweed to come past. So they need to be able to sense it and then they'll get their little, um, they're called palps at the front here, and they'll grab onto it and they'll actually tuck it underneath themselves so they can lock down. And then this is his, this is his mouthpiece here. And they've just got a little radula and they'll just graze away at that at that weed. So he'll actually trap the weed under the under his front of his head there and then just keep munging it, wow. eating it. So they were opportunistic feeders in the wild. Cool, so this is, you can see here, this is where we draw our water from. So there's two boys out there. Um, they've both got screens on them to prevent fish and other things coming in and blocking up our pumps and hurting the fish. So they're 500 metres offshore. We've got two intakes. If you look around behind, so this is our pump shed, which we've just been in. Um, all the water is pumped from there up onto the farm, into the tanks, and then everything's gravity fed back out through a series of a series of channels back into these these two settlement ponds, where all the uneaten food and feces is caught, and then the water feeds back out to the beach. Basically, it's acting the same as how it's come in, minus a little bit of oxygen. So they have money strips of oxygen out of the water. That's why we need to keep replenishing it at such a high rate. So beautiful crystal, pristine water is what we're after and pretty much what we've got here. So happy days. Is there international or national research on ab farming that you can have access to? Like, are there yeah, any so researchers? Yeah, so there, there is. There's... Australian Abalone Growers Association um, and we all tip in some money every year and then money is matched by FRDC and then we organise um, research, what research projects we want to we do. Yeah. So at the moment the big research we're doing is looking at better feed. Yeah. Yeah. But we've got other projects, genetics is on there, you know, we're looking at genetics. Yeah, so. yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good yeah. uh, do you have any ponds that you do something differently for just you know, one season to see, you know, if it has a better or worse effect? Than we do an R and D all the time. Right. Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 We're trying things all the time. So, <laughs> yeah. Different, different, um, you know, different times of the year for breed, for spawning or breeding. Um, feeds a big one. Stocking rates are a big one. Um, yeah, we, we're getting better at it every year. So yeah. we, we've been at this farm for just four years, being, being uh, business partners. Mm -hmm. um, and the amount of stuff we've learned in that four years from, from our first year, yeah, it's, uh, it's really exciting. You're learning new stuff every day. Mm -hmm. We're trying new stuff all the day, every day. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so these are our, these are our black lips. So these are all females. And you see they've got a very, very dark, dark foot. Mm -hmm. um, this is her gonad in behind here. So that little, that dark section there is, um, is her gonad, so that's where her eggs are stored. Yeah. Very cool.
But because I was saying before that um, the Greenland spawn a lot later in the season, those first ones that we looked at, they're actually temperature controlled water in there. So we're manipulating them to start putting on gonad now. And then these ones are on ambient, so then they're both ready to spawn at the, at the same time. So here we are. These are harvested stock ready to go to market. So um, we weigh them out into five kilo bags, and then two of these will go into one poly box, and then they'll go either Melbourne or Sydney. Yeah. So they're not put on ice or... So we chill the water down in here, um, just to lower their metabolism. Yeah, and we're trying to purge their gut, so... Um, yeah, poop in there, so then they're nice and clean when they get to the, get to the customer. Um, so they're all hand graded when we harvest, so they should all be, um, you know, a single size. Okay, so when you're grading, when you talk about grading, yeah. does that mean, um, how do you grade it? So it's on size? Yeah, so on size. So basically, when we harvest them out of the tank, everyone has one of these, which is a chipper. I don't know if you can see that, but there's lines actually marked in that chipper. And then, yeah, it's just measured on the on the knife to this certain range. It'll be like a six mil gap, and that, that fish has to fit inside that gap. Yeah, to make the grade. Yeah. Um, how many abalone usually make up about a five kilo bag? So these abalone are 80 grams, so they're 12 to the kilo. Okay. So what's five times 12? <laughs> 60. <laughs> so about 60 abalone. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, smallest fish we sell are 20 to the kilo, so they're 50 grammers. And about the biggest we grow is a 100 gram fish, which is 10 to the kilo. Yeah. So there's different markets? Fish yeah, or? different customers like different size fish. Yeah. The restaurant trade love it because they can have Work their out. dish, know exactly what it's costing them to produce, serve up a whole abalone for the dish. So it's really just um, personal preference of uh, yeah, what size fish people want to buy. The bigger we get them, the more money we get we get for the abalone. Oh. So Joel, you have a lot of work to do yeah. How many workers have you got here at the moment? So we're currently, we're operating at about 11 or 12 fish on the Quibbling. This is our quieter, quieter time of the year. During the summer, we'll be up over 14, 15 fish um, on the Quibbling each week. So, um, yeah, we employ mainly local staff. Um, we've got a really good crew at the moment. Um, yeah. And training? What are we talking about training? Yeah. Right, so we have three guys doing their cert three in agriculture at the moment. Um, yeah, so we picked up Christian School used to run an agriculture program, which has um, been really great for us. So we picked up a lot of their students. We picked up three of their students that have gone through that agriculture schooling and then um, come, come to us. So yeah, we, we really look for those people that are interested. In, um, yeah, we plan. You know, we, we like to upskill them. And, and just walking around the ad farm, you see everyone in their wet weather. You've also probably got to be pretty tough to work in an ad farm. You're outside. Beautiful day in Stanley. You've not much wind and sun shining, but I'm sure that's not always the case. No, yeah, you've got to be very tough. You've got to love um, putting on the wet weather and getting out in amongst the weather. Uh, yeah, it is good fun, you know, being rubbed up nice and warm and being out in the extreme weather, but we certainly do. Thanks, Amber and Lucas, for coming and checking out our abalone farm and seeing how we're uh, seeing how we're going. It's been a pleasure to have you here. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Thanks a lot.